Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we're doing is we're creating dot plots and we're also taking a look at frequency tables. So, dot plots, lots of fun. We have a huge data set here. We have professional indoor soccer teams and the number of go goals they scored over the last 23 games. Okay, so we want a dot plot to answer or to take a look at this data and to spread it out and make it look good. So, Here's what I'm going to do. I need to identify the smallest uh, datum and the greatest datum. I do believe the 8 is the smallest. There's another one over here, and I need, there's another one over here, and I need the largest. Here's a 16. Do I see something greater than a 16? Here's another 16. Here's another 16. Nope, looks like 16 is the largest. So I need to go from 8 to 16. So I'm going to put it right in here. Tough spot for it, but okay. So I'm going to start. I'm actually going to start with seven because I like to go one interval lower than my smallest and one interval greater than my largest. Kind of cleans things up nicely. And now I need to decide whether I'm going to use an interval of one or interval of two. Let's see. So seven, eight. Let's try an interval of one, see what it looks like. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, that's fine, I guess. Sometimes it looks a little crowded, and this one's starting to look a little crowded, but I suppose we'll keep it. Not such a terrible idea to use an interval of two. In fact, let me try this again with an interval of two and see the difference. So make a new line, and I'll start with six this time. Six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, 18. Ooh, this looks a lot nicer. Okay, a lot cleaner. So I'm going to stick with this guy. Now, all I have to do is dot or plot my dots. So I have an 8. So I'm going to put a dot right there. Done with the 8. 16. There we go. 10. I'm crossing off as I go so I don't mess it up. 9. So a 9 is between 8 and 10. There you go. 11, another in between. Two, another 11. Now I'm going to stack them. Put one on top. Get a 10. There it is. Okay, and a 15. There it is. Done with that. 16. There you go. This is just, it's a little bit of fun, I guess. You're putting them in here. 11. Ooh, I'm up to 3 on that one. 15. It's like a little race. There's one there. 13. Right there, eight, back to eight. There we go, and a nine, nine. Here we go, an 11. Ooh, all right, 11's doing great. Nine, let's see, right there. And I'm trying to make everything even as far as the levels are concerned. It becomes easier to read. There's an eight, another 11. All right, go 11. 16, don't forget about 16. 15, nice, they're doing well. 10, right there. A 9, right here, ooh. 9's making a, a nice little late run here. And a 12, right there. All right, cool. So there's my dot plot. And then we have all kinds of little questions here. What number of goals describes the center of my data? Now the center of my data, here's the bulk of my data here. So my center is probably going to be somewhere in the range of right here. So maybe uh, you can make an argument of 9 or argument of 10. Now, it's not the exact center of the values, right, my high and my low. No, because I only, I only have a very little bit of data in there. So the center of my data, you're looking at the bulk of your data and then finding the middle of it. Least and most common goals scored. Least common and most common. Well, least common, I'm looking for the, the one where um, I guess I'm not having any goals, but I do have to have a goal. So maybe the uh, 13, okay, least common number or least common number of goals. No, the least common number of goals would be 8, right? And then uh, the most common uh, number of goals, let's see... Uh, no, 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 not my 8. No, I'm looking at that the wrong way. I only have a value of 1 for these guys, so my 12 and my 13 would be the least 
a number of goals scored, and the most would be my 11, right, and my 9. So those guys are the ones that showed up the, uh, more often. So he goes through your questions and use the plot, the dot plot, to help you out. Now, taking a look at a frequency table. So that takes care of that guy. So my frequency table. My frequency table takes a look at the same or something similar as far as information is concerned, except I'm using tally marks. So I have here sixth graders roll two number cubes 21 times. Uh, the number found uh, the sum of two numbers that are rolled. There are 21 rolls, so here we go. So the possibilities range from 2 to 12, and now I need to plot. So, But I'm using tallies instead. So 9 shows up, so I put one tally mark. And then a 2, put a tally mark. All right, then a 4, put a tally mark. Then a 6, tally mark. And a 5, tally mark. And a 7, tally mark. 8, to go. 11, down here. And 9, and you cruise your way through. And a 4. Try not to go too fast, you might mess up. And a 5. And a couple of 7s, sevens, two 7s. Sevens. And a 2 8s. Another 7. Here we go. And then a 5. Now watch out for this one, right? Here's another 7. This 7 here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. For my 5th, I always go across. That doesn't look good. All right, so it kind of looks like this. One, two, three, four, and then you go across for the fifth one, and then two sixes, one, two, one, two, and I was done with that one also. And why do I do that? What's the deal with this guy? Well, it makes a nice even group of five if you'd like to count. So if you have a tally set for, and you have another one, you have two here, you know that this is 12 right away. The frequency is 12 because this is a five, this is a five, and you know that's a two. Nice quick way to add, okay? And then my frequency is my, my number. So I have one of the, one, excuse me, I have one there. Let me erase that. This would be a one, a zero, a two. You just add them up. There's your frequency. Four, a five, a three, a two, a zero, a one, and a zero. So then you can hit the questions, okay? And uh, that's the deal. So there's your frequency table and uh, dot plot fun. And that's the deal. All right, folks. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.